Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Military TV. In 2018, when Iraqi forces supported by the US trying to retake Mosul came under sustained attack by waves of small grenade-dropping drones. USAF jets ruled the skies above, but were of no use against quadrocopters flying at a few hundred feet. Saudi Arabia absorbed a painful strike in September 2019 when an Iranian drone swarm combined with cruise missiles struck oil fields, causing heavy damage. Also, like the incident that happened recently in northern Iraq, a rocket attack on U.S.-led forces killed a civilian contractor on February 15, 2021, and injured a U.S. service member, the U.S. coalition in Iraq said. And it is the deadliest such attack in almost a year. Besides including a drone attack on a Saudi airport and a rocket attack on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad in recent weeks. So the attack on Saudi Arabia is the latest tangible example of the evolving threat. Precision-guided, sophisticated enemy air attacks. Longer-range air defense systems such as the Patriot, David's Sling, or the S-400 can intercept threats at tens or hundreds of kilometers away. But today, because state enemies can bypass long-range defenses, countries must always have the ability to directly intercept the actual munitions. Drone use has now become widespread, as we have seen in the current Syrian, Libyan, and Armenian-Azerbaijan conflicts. In an increasing number of cases, armed drones have destroyed the mobile air defense systems that are supposed to stop them. The Russian-made Pantsir, like Shorad IM, a combined gun and missile vehicle with its own radar, has suffered badly, with at least 23 reportedly destroyed by Turkish Bayraktar TB2 and Anka S drones. Small loitering munitions, effectively kamikaze drones which can be used in large numbers like the Israeli Harops deployed by Azeri forces may overwhelm defenses. Azerbaijan has at least four mobile Harop launchers, each able to put up nine of the killer drones, so a wave might consist of 36 Harops attacking from all directions simultaneously. Without close defense capabilities forming part of a country's multi-layer defense systems, strategic sites are simply not adequately protected. In the context of multi-layer defense development and deployment around strategic sites and sensitive targets, Israel has taken on the role of global leader. Israel has carried out a test of its air defenses, which for the first time reveals a highly integrated system that can knock out a broad spectrum of targets, from maneuvering ballistic missiles to simple drones. This accomplishment has far-reaching implications not only for Israel's defense capabilities, but for the United States. The U.S. Army is in the process of developing an integrated tactical defense system called the Integrated Air and Missile Defense Battle Command System. If the Israeli air defense integration is complete, it is probably the first time that systems optimized for different threats can share threat data and hand off responsibility to different tiers of the defense system. Unlike the U.S. effort, Israel's integrated system is national and includes Ballistic Missile Defenses BMD. The U.S. Army system is tactical and only attempts to deal with tactical ballistic missile threats, and even there relies on the evolved but still antiquated Patriot system. Above all, the Israeli test for the first time demonstrated a system that can destroy cruise missiles. While most of the global focus since the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict has been on drones as an emerging unconventional threat to traditional military operations, the cruise missile represents the biggest threat to critical infrastructure installations and defense bases, both forward operating and fixed bases at national level. The rise of high-precision cruise missiles in the hands of second-tier actors such as Iran and Iran's client Yemen presents a threat to Israel and to its newfound allies and friends in the Gulf states. The unacknowledged Iranian attacks on two Saudi Arabian facilities, Abqaiq and Qurais, made clear that Iran had the ability to fire autonomous drones and cruise missiles and strike targets at high accuracy without a man in the loop. And let's now talk a bit about Israeli air defense systems such as David's Sling and Iron Dome. Firstly, we'll see what David's Sling has. David's Sling is a complete air defense system to defeat the full spectrum of air and missile threats. 
It is developed by the Israeli defense contractor Rafal Advanced Defense Systems and the American defense contractor Raytheon. Designed to intercept enemy planes, drones, tactical ballistic missiles, medium to long range rockets, and cruise missiles fired at ranges of 40 kilometers to 300 kilometers. David Sling is meant to replace the MIM-23 Hawk and MIM-104 Patriot in the Israeli arsenal. David Sling serves as a flexible, multi-purpose weapon system capable of engaging a range of targets from a dynamic range of platforms. Furthermore, the system is composed of a two-stage multi-pulse stunner interceptor missile which uses electro-optical IR sensors and an ELM-2084 AESA multi-mission radar by ELTA systems for targeting and guidance and control systems by Elbit systems. It can be mounted on an array of ground, naval, and aerial platforms including existing rail and canister launchers and the firing units allow for 360-degree coverage through vertical launch of the missile. In the last section, we will discuss about Iron Dome. Iron Dome is a mobile all-weather air defense system developed by Rafal Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries in 2007 since the escalation of the conflict. Iron Dome's missiles, which cost $20,000 each, are fired from a team-operated battery acting in conjunction with battery-deployed radar-guided early warning systems. The Iron Dome relies upon a high-resolution ELM-2084 active electronically scanned array radar to detect and track incoming projectiles. The system is designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells fired from distances of 4 kilometers to 70 kilometers away and whose trajectory would take them to an Israeli-populated area. According to its manufacturer, Iron Dome could operate day and night, under adverse weather conditions, and can respond to multiple threats simultaneously. For its specifications, Iron Dome has three central components, detection and tracking radar, battle management and weapon control, and missile firing unit with 20 ready-to-fire from container launchers. For the radar system, ELM-2084 has been developed by an Israeli defense company, ELTA. While the control system has been built by an Israeli software company, Impress Systems, engaged by Rafal. The missiles launched by the firing unit of Iron Dome includes Tamir interceptor missiles. It has several steering fins for high maneuverability and is equipped with electro-optic sensors. In addition, the Tamir interceptor was designed for high efficiency and low cost. The missile is 3 meters long, weighs 90 kilograms with 160 millimeter diameter, and it could reach 5,000 to 70,000 meter range. In short, for Israel, these air defense systems are critical to the national security of the country. That's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and don't forget to leave your comments below if you have a great topic to be discussed in the next video.